Now these games are light years away from chess or checkers or Monopoly or Scrabble. So what, what different are you actually bringing to this to ensure that people have a buy-in that they, that they enjoy that is different from those more traditional games? Sure, sure. So an alternate reality game, it always starts with a really juicy premise. And in the case of World Without Oil, the premise was that we had suddenly run out of oil um, and everything that you can imagine was affected by it. Transportation, agriculture, schools, dating, NASCAR. Um, and we just asked people to document what their lives would be like in this environment. And it was a really just a dramatic thing to put yourself in that situation. And I think what grabs people's interest in these mysteries and in these games is that you are yourself. You don't have to buy into some alternate character or some avatar. You get to be yourself, but kind of this more superhero version of yourself. Um, so when you start with that dramatic premise and then you engage people, their real personalities, their real lives within this alternate fiction, um, it's really exciting for well, them again, to play I, it out. I'm not trying to sound like a killjoy or anything here, uh, <laughs> Jane, uh, take my word for that, but, but humor me on this premise. These games mm -hmm. are fictional, they're alternative reality. Uh, it, it's, it, you can't touch it, I guess, in the way that you would touch Scrabble or chess or checkers. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not physically there in the same way. So if you, if you participate, are you getting a less true sense of achievement at the end of the day? Oh, absolutely not. No, I mean, it's interesting because you can touch these games. They are physical in a way. Um, a lot of times there are real world objects that are hidden all over the globe that players go out and collect. I mean, they have, they have props. They do have this sort of physical sense of realness. And at the end of the day, what you have is this community that's been created online. And I guess you would say that's how you know you've won an alternate reality game, when you have created a community of people, and, and it might be on a wiki, um, it might be on discussion forums, um, but you have this sense of people have come together, you've created solutions and ideas, and if you go to the website for World Without Oil now, you'll see that our players created this completely immersive archive of 32 weeks in a world without oil. They made videos, they wrote blog posts, they drew manga comics, and the point of it is to collectively tell a story and collectively try to solve a problem. And it's, it's much more of an achievement than just points or you know, a flag that says you won. Um, it's this very real story that gets to live after the game is over, created by you as part of this big community. Do the players, though, disperse once the game is over and that essentially is mm. the end of their contact? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, what first got me excited about this genre was noticing that at the end of the game, the players did not want to leave. They were so engaged by this alternate reality, they kind of couldn't bear the thought of going back to their ordinary lives. And because the, the distinction between the game and their real lives is so blurry, right, because it's, it's really you, and you're using normal everyday technologies, um, it feels like you should be able to keep playing. And so with every game that I've run, I've seen the community stay around. They keep talking to each other, and they try and think of ways to continue the experience, whether it's solving other real-world problems or just continuing to have you know, annual reunions of traveling across the country to meet up face-to-face -face and, and kind of you know, have nostalgia for that adventure that you went on together. We're going to show another clip now. This one's of a game that you are intimately aware of since you... Uh... You designed it. The Lost Ring. Roll tape, please. Okay. In 393 AD, Theodosius banned the Olympic Games, and an ancient secret was lost forever. In 2008, the secret is about to be uncovered. mystery the world has ever known becomes the global adventure of a lifetime. Please, I need your help. I can't do this alone. Hello? Anyone there? 
Jane, what was the inspiration for that one? Well, this is basically an attempt to take the Olympics, which for thousands of years have been the games that bring the world together, and to try and find the equivalent of that in the computer game and the video game culture. You know, what's the computer game that brings the world together? So The Lost Ring is, is a collaboration of a number of different organizations, uh, Digital Creative Agency, McDonald's, the International Olympics Committee, and we're trying to create basically the digital game version of the Olympics where people from around the world can solve this ancient mystery together, learn a new sport, and exercise their strengths together as a community. Any concern that because such a you know, conventional company like McDonald's is involved, mm -hmm. and a lot of people online tend to be people who, I don't know, subversive is too strong, but they enjoy the more subversive sure. aspects of life. Yeah. Uh, any issues there? Yeah, just so the great thing about alternate reality games is that Historically, they've always been free. You don't have to buy a console to play them. You don't have to buy the game. They're totally free. And so the alternate reality gaming community is really open to anyone who wants to help further this new genre by creating these games. And so there's actually been a really positive feedback to the idea that an organization as traditional as McDonald's might be an organization that would invest and take seriously this kind of experimental form of games. I mean, you asked a lot of questions about alternate reality games. Not, a, not everyone even knows what they are yet. So I think everyone's been pretty excited about the idea that such a traditional organization is going to start taking these games seriously and helping to make them on a really global scale. Okay, and let's tackle one more thing before we cross the studio and continue our discussion with okay. the other guests. Uh, I recently saw you quoted in the New York Times as having said, the skills you develop in game worlds solve real world problems. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so, you know, in our work culture, and even to some extent sort of diplomacy, we're starting to move towards massively participatory collaboration. So we're using wikis and crowdsourcing tools and theories of open innovation. And as far as I can tell, nothing in the world trains people better for these new ways of collaborating with massively many people than alternate reality games and other MMOs. Um, they're basically teaching us to use the real tools, the real technology, and the real techniques that we need to be able to be effective in this new kind of collaborative technology environment. Um, so those are the skills that you're learning in the games and they're showing up in the workplace now uh, too. Understood. Jane, it has uh, brought me a great deal of happiness talking to you and we're going to continue our discussion about happiness and the pursuit thereof on the other side of the studio in just a moment. So stand by if you would. <laughs>